Connective tissue. Connective tissue, one of the four basic tissues of the body, is derived mostly from mesoderm, and serves to connect those tissues and different types of connective tissues to each other. During embryonic development, multipotential mesenchymal cells of the primitive embryonic connective tissue known as mesenchyme migrate throughout the body to differentiate into mature cells of specialized connective tissue, such as tissues of cartilage, bone, and blood. Mesenchymal cells also give rise to cells of connective tissues that are not specialized connective tissue proper, including fibroblasts, adipocytes, and mast cells. The various types of connective tissues have diverse and far-ranging functions, cartilage, bone, tendons, ligaments, and capsules of organs provide structural support. Blood, lymph, and connective tissue proper act as a medium for exchange by delivering nutrients, waste products, and signaling molecules to and from cells of the body. Certain cells that travel in the bloodstream leave the blood and enter connective tissue proper to defend and protect the body from potentially deleterious agents. Adipose cells store lipids and congregate to form adipose tissue serving as local storage depots of fat. Connective tissue proper is composed of extracellular matrix and cells, some of which function in manufacturing the matrix in which they and other cells are embedded. Depending on the function of a particular connective tissue, cells, or the extracellular matrix predominates and forms the essential component. Fibers are more important than their cells, the fibroblasts, for the function of tendons and ligaments, whereas in loose connective tissue, fibroblasts serve a more important function than do the fibers. In other instances, such as during immunological responses, the function of the ground substance supersedes the functions of cells and fibers because the defense of the body depends on the characteristics of the ground substance. Extracellular matrix, the non-living component of connective tissue, composed of ground substance and fibers, is described in Chapter 4, but its salient features are reviewed here. Ground substance is composed of glycosaminoglycans, either sulfated, example keratin sulfate, heparin, chondroitin sulfates, dermatin sulfate, and heparan sulfate, or nonsulfate, example hyaluronic acid. Proteoglycans, which, by being covalently bound to hyaluronic acid, form macromolecules of agrican aggregates, producing the gel state of the extracellular matrix. Some adhesive glycoproteins, such as fibronectin, which is dispersed throughout the extracellular matrices, and laminin, which is also widespread as it is localized in the basal lamina. Others, such as chondronectin, are located in cartilage, and osteonectin is located in bone. Fibers, also non-living substances, are of two types, collagen fibers are of 25 different types depending on the amino acid sequence of their three alpha chains, but only six are of major importance for the purpose of this textbook, Table 6.1. Most collagen fibers have great tensile strength. Glycin, proline, hydroxyproline, and hydroxylysine are the most common amino acids of collagen. Elastin and microfibrils compose elastic fibers. The amorphous protein elastin, composed mostly of glycin and proline, is responsible for their elasticity, example elastic fibers may be stretched 150% of their length whereas microfibrils are responsible for their stability. Elastin also contains a high concentration of lysine, responsible for the formation of desmosine bonds that are elastic and deformable. Ehlers-Danlos syndrome is a group of rare genetic disorders affecting humans caused by defective collagen synthesis. Symptoms vary widely based on the type of Ehlers-Danlos syndrome the patient has. In each case, the symptoms are ultimately due to faulty or reduced amounts of collagen, the most common of which include unstable joints that are easily dislocated and hypermobile because of overstretchable ligaments that are composed of defective collagen. Some forms affect the skin, and others affect the walls of blood vessels. 
The severity of the syndromes of this incurable disease can vary from mild to life-threatening. C. Marfan syndrome is an autosomal dominant disorder in which the elastic tissue is weakened because of a mutation in the fibrillin gene. This disorder affects the elastic fibers of the cardiovascular, ocular, and skeletal systems. Individuals with Marfan syndrome are unusually tall, with very long arms, fingers, legs, feet, and toes. Cardiovascular problems are life-threatening and include valvular problems and dilation of the ascending aorta. Ocular disorders include myopia and detached lens. Skeletal disorders include abnormally weak periosteum because of defects in the elastic fibers being unable to provide an appositional force in bone zero development. The cells of connective tissue, the cells of connective tissue proper are classified into two categories, fixed, resident, referring to cells that do not migrate, and transient, referring to cells that use the blood and lymph vascular system, S, to relocate to regions of connective tissue proper where they have a particular function to perform, and then they either die there or leave to go to a different location, Table 6.2. Fixed Cells of Connective Tissue Fibroblasts Fibroblasts, Fig 6.1 and 6.2, the most abundant cells of connective tissue, are derived from mesenchymal cells and are responsible for synthesizing the extracellular matrix. Fibroblasts are either active or quiescent, myofibroblasts are a subcategory of fibroblasts, zero active fibroblasts lie parallel to the long axis of collagen bundles as elongated, fusiform cells with pale staining cytoplasm and a dark, large ovoid nucleus. During matrix production, the Golgi apparatus and rough endoplasmic reticulum, rare, are well developed. Myosin is located throughout the cytoplasm, and actin and oactinin are localized at the cell periphery. Inactive fibroblasts are smaller, display acidophilic cytoplasm, and have a denser, deeply stained nucleus. Rare and the Golgi apparatus are reduced in these cells, but ribosomes are abundant. Fibroblasts may be modified to become myofibroblasts in regions of wound healing. They possess characteristics of fibroblasts and smooth muscle cells, but in contrast to smooth muscle, they do not have an external lamina. Myofibroblasts function in wound contraction, and as resident cells of the periodontal ligament they may assist in tooth eruption. Pericytes, derived from mesenchymal cells, partially surround endothelial cells of capillaries and small venules. They possess their own basal lamina, which may fuse with that of adjacent endothelial cells. Pericytes share some of the characteristics of smooth muscle and endothelial cells, and they may give rise to fibroblasts, endothelial cells, or vascular smooth muscle cells in response to injury. Adipose cells Fat cells, adipocytes, are amitotic and function in the synthesis and storage of triglycerides, see Fig 6.2. There are two types of adipose cells unilocular and multilocular. Unilocular fat cells, large round cells, N120 gym in diameter, filled with a single drop of lipid, constitute the principal population of white adipose tissue. Electron microscopy shows a thin peripheral cytoplasm rich in ribosomes with a small Colgi complex, few mitochondria, rare, and numerous pinocytotic vesicles along the cytoplasmic aspect of the cell membrane. Multilocular fat cells are polygonal in shape, are smaller than white fat cells, and store fat in small droplets throughout the cytoplasm. Electron micrographs show abundant mitochondria, which are responsible for the cell's darker coloration. Hence they're being called brown fat cells, the principal component of brown adipose tissue. Although fibroblasts are considered to be fixed cells, they are able to display some limited movement. These cells may undergo cell division under special conditions, such as in wound healing. Additionally, when tendons are stressed because of overuse, fibroblasts may be stimulated to become chondrocytes and form cartilage matrix around themselves and transform the tendon into fibrocartilage. Additionally, fibroblasts may differentiate into adipose cells, under pathological conditions, fibroblasts may even differentiate into osteoblasts. Storage and release of fats by adipose cells during digestion, 
fats in the lumen of the small intestine are catabolized by pancreatic lipase into fatty acids and glycerol, substances that are absorbed by surface absorptive cells of the epithelial lining. When in the cytoplasm of these cells, the fatty acids and glycerol enter the smooth endoplasmic reticulum, where they are re-esterified and conveyed to the Kalgai apparatus, where they are invested with a protein coat. These proteinated triglycerides, called chylomicrons, are released into the lamina propria of the small intestine to enter lymph channels, known as lacteals, and eventually are released into the bloodstream. Capillaries that vascularize adipose tissue have an enzyme, lipoprotein lipase, manufactured by adipocytes, on the luminal surface of their endothelial cells. This enzyme catabolizes chylomicrons and other bloodborne lipids, such as very low density lipoproteins, VLDL, into glycerol and fatty acids. The fatty acids leave the capillaries, penetrate the adipocyte plasma lemma, and within the cytoplasm of fat cells are formed into triglycerides, which are stored in the pool of lipid droplets, an efficient and low weight method of energy storage. When norepinephrine and epinephrine bind to their respective receptor sites on the fat cell membrane, the adipocytes adenylate cyclase system is activated to form cyclic adenosine monophosphate, AMP, which induces the cytoplasmic enzyme hormone-sensitive lipase to degrade triglycerides of the lipid droplet. The fatty acids and glycerol leave the adipocyte to enter the surrounding capillaries. Mast cells Mast cells, 20 to 30 gym in diameter, are derived from precursors in the bone marrow and enter the connective tissue compartment where they mature, live for a few months, and only seldom enter the cell cycle. These ovoid cells with a centrally placed nucleus have membrane-bound granules that are responsible for their metachromasia. Mast cells store some pharmacologic agents, known as primary or preformed mediators, in granules and synthesize others, known as secondary mediators, as they are required. Zero primary mediators are histamine and heparin, in connective tissue mast cells, or histamine and chondroitin sulfate, in mucosal mast cells of the mucosa of the respiratory tract and alimentary canal, neutral proteases, tryptase, cumis, and carboxypeptidases, aryl sulfatase, b glucuronidase, kininogenase, peroxidase, superoxide dismutase, eosinophil chemotactic factor, and neutrophil chemotactic factor. Secondary mediators, synthesized from membrane arachidonic acid precursors, include leukotrienes, CD and ED, thromboxanes, thromboxane as and thromboxane B, and prostaglandins, prostaglandin do. Secondary mediators that are not derived from arachidonic acid precursors include platelet activating factor, bradykinins, interleukins, IL-4, IL-5, and IL-6, and tumor necrosis factor N, see Table 6.3 for a list of the major primary and secondary mediators released by mast cells. Mast Cell Activation and Degranulation The plasma membranes of mast cells possess high affinity cell surface FC receptors, FCERI, for IgE molecules that project into the extracellular space. These cells have the ability to release pharmacologic agents that set off a localized response known as immediate hypersensitivity reaction or, in extreme cases, a widespread, possibly fatal response known as an anaphylactic reaction. Certain drugs, venoms of some insects, various pollens, and other antigens may elicit these responses in the following manner, See Fig 6.4 mast cells become sensitized when they bind IgE antibodies against a particular antigen to their FCTRL receptors, but the mast cells do not respond to the first exposure to the antigen. If the same antigens enter the connective tissue for a second time, the antigens bind to the IgE on the mast cell surface, causing the immunoglobulin molecules to be linked to each other and the receptors to be crowded together stimulating receptor coupling factors to activate adenylate cyclase and phospholipase air adenylate cyclase is responsible for the formation and increased concentration of cyclic amp within the plasma cell cytosol inducing the release of ca ions from sequestered storage compartments which induces the exocytosis of preformed mediators by degranulation 
phospholipase as induces the synthesis of arachidonic acid, which is transformed into secondary mediators that are immediately released into the extracellular space. The release of mediators, both primary and secondary, by mast cells, see Table 6.3, in response to the binding of antigens to their surface IgE results in the following sequence of events, histamine is a vasodilator, and its effects are to increase vascular permeability, it also is a bronchoconstrictor, and it not only reduces the luminal diameter of bronchioles, but also causes an increase in mucus production. The leakage of plasma from the blood vessels brings complement into the connective tissue spaces, which is catabolized by neutral proteases into macromolecules that contribute to the inflammatory process. Neutrophil and eosinophil chemotactic factors recruit neutrophils and eosinophils to the site of inflammation, neutrophils kill microorganisms, and eosinophils phagocytose antigen antibody complexes and kill parasites. Bradykinins also increase vascular permeability and elicit pain in the area of inflammation. Leukotrien CD4 and E, have similar functions as histamine, but are much more potent in their action, they do not affect mucus production, however. Prostaglandin do causes contraction of bronchiolar smooth muscles and increases mucus production. Platelet activating factor attracts neutrophils and eosinophils to the site of inflammation, increases the permeability of blood vessels, and is a bronchoconstrictor. Thromboxane L although it is rapidly inactivated by being converted into thromboxane bulletin is a vasoconstrictor and induces aggregation of platelets. Macrophages. Zero macrophages, irregularly shaped cells about 10 to 30 tim in diameter, are phagocytes, belonging to the mononuclear phagocyte system, all of whose MEM bears are derived from common bone marrow precursor cells. They travel in the bloodstream as monocytes, but when they enter connective tissue, they mature and become macrophages. Some macrophages remain in the area of the body that they enter and are known as resident, fixed, macrophages, example Kupfer cells, Langerhans cells, dust cells, microglia, whereas others are transient, free, illicite, macrophages that perform their function and then either die or migrate from the area of their activity. Some macrophages that have to eliminate larger substances fuse with each other to be able to perform their duties, examples of such cells are osteoclasts and foreign body giant cells. The macrophage cell membranes have a smooth outline, unless they are actively moving or phagocytosing foreign substances or cellular debris, and then they develop folds and pleats on their plasma lemma. To be able to perform their functions, some macrophages have to be activated by signaling molecules released by lymphocytes that are participating in an immune response, see Chapter 12. As macrophages mature, their cytoplasm possesses numerous vacuoles, a prominent Golgi apparatus, a copious amount of lysosomes, many microtubules, and numerous profiles of rare. Their nuclei are dense and characteristically kidney-shaped. The principal functions of macrophages, other than phagocytosis of invading microorganisms and cellular and extracellular debris, are to synthesize and release signaling molecules, such as tumor necrosis factored INIL1, and to act as antigen-presenting cells that display antigenic fragments on their MEM brain-bound receptors to lymphocytes inducing them to initiate an immune response. Transient connective tissue cells. Plasma cells. Plasma cells derived from a subcategory of lymphocytes, B cells, that have been activated by contact with an antigen, are large, approximately 20 gym in diameter, oval cells, the heterochromatin of whose eccentric, dense nucleus displays a characteristic clock face or cartwheel configuration, Fig 6.5. The cytoplasm of these cells is richly endowed with Colgai apparatus and rare because they are responsible for the manufacture of antibodies in response to antigenic challenges. These cells live for approximately two to three weeks. They are present throughout the connective tissue compartment of the body, but they are especially numerous in regions of chronic inflammation and areas that are susceptible to antigenic or microbial invasions, such as the lamina propria of the alimentary canal and respiratory tract. Leukocytes, or white blood cells, 
circulate in the blood leukocytes and enter the connective tissue compartments to which they are recruited by cytokines or that they recognize by their own homing receptors. These cells are discussed in detail in chapters 10 and 12. Monocytes are discussed in the previous section on macrophages. Neutrophils respond to neutrophil chemotactic factor released by mast cells to act in acute inflammation, where they phagocytose and digest bacteria. After they degranulate and destroy the bacteria, they die and become a component of pus. Eosinophils are recruited to the site by eosinophil chemotactic factor released by mast cells to act in acute inflammation. They kill parasites and phagocytose antibody antigen complexes. Basophils are similar to mast cells and perform the same function as mast cells. Lymphocytes are most numerous at sites of chronic inflammation. CL AS SIF ICA TIO N O F C O N N E C dot T I dot V dot E T I dot S dot S U E there are three categories of connective tissue. Embryonic connective tissue exists only during the embryonic and fetal stages of development, although some authors consider it to belong to the category of connective tissue proper, which is distributed throughout the body. Specialized connective tissue consists of cartilage, bone, and blood. Table 6.4 summarizes the various categories and subcategories of the connective tissues. Captor embryonic connective tissue. There are two types of embryonic connective tissues, mesenchymal connective tissue is widespread throughout the embryo and fetus and is composed of a gelatinous ground substance rich in hyaluronic acid in which reticular fibers, type 3 collagen fibers, and mesenchymal cells are embedded. Mesenchymal cells are multipotential cells whose relatively long processes extend in various directions away from the cell body. Each mesenchymal cell has a single, pale, ovoid nucleus displaying a well-defined nucleolus surrounded by a slender array of fine chromatin threads. With the exception of a few regions of the body, mesenchymal cells are not present in the adult. Mucoid connective tissue, located only deep to the embryonic skin and in the umbilical cord, is composed of a hyaluronic acid.rich ground substance in which fibroblasts and slender type I and type 3 collagen fibers are embedded. Within the umbilical cord, the mucoid connective tissue is known as Wharton's jelly. Hay fever victims experience localized edema and swelling of the nasal mucosa, which hinders breathing and results in the swathed up feeling. These symptoms result from histamine being released by the mast cells of the nasal mucosa, increasing permeability of the small blood vessels and localized edema. Difficulty in breathing also accompanies patients with asthma resulting from leukotrienes being released in the lungs that brings about bronchospasm. Zero mast cell degranulation is normally a localized condition bringing on a typical mild inflammatory response. Hyperallergic individuals are at risk, however, because they may experience systemic anaphylaxis after a second exposure to the allergen, example bee sting. This exposure, characterized by systemic and severe immediate hypersensitivity reaction, is called anaphylactic shock. The symptoms occur almost immediately to within a few minutes, and if they are left untreated, death may occur within a few hours. Symptoms include sudden decrease in blood pressure and shortness of breath. Wearing a medical emergency bracelet is suggested for hyperallergic individuals because it informs an emergency health provider of the need for immediate medical attention. Normally, the extracellular fluid within the tissues is returned to capillaries directly or to lymph vessels and then to the bloodstream. During an inflammatory response, there is an accumulation of extracellular fluid within loose connective tissue that prevents the return of extracellular fluid to the bloodstream. This condition results in edema, gross swelling, which may be due to the excessive release of histamine and leukotriene CL and D4, products of mast cells that increase capillary permeability. Edema can also be caused by venous or lymphatic vessel obstructions.